everybody, it is your boy Twin Plays here, back in another video. I hope you guys are all doing amazing. So today in this video, we're gonna be talking about making your Roblox game Xbox, PlayStation, like console compatible. Now, um, this isn't gonna be like a in-depth tutorial on every little thing you can do, but really just gonna go over some things on like what how do you what is like a way of doing console? Like it's kind of like the VR version of how to make your game VR compatible, but this one's not as hard. But it does require more attention to it because there's a lot of things you have to be aware of. Um, so I'm going to leave all of the links in the description. So feel free to go check them out right now. I'm going to leave a bunch of dev forms and just like guides on like what is out there. Now, Roblox has a lot of documentation on this stuff. So you really don't have to worry. But I did find a very helpful um, dev form that we're going to be looking at right now. But um, yeah, we're really going to go over this. So first things first, if you head into studio and you want to make your game xbox compatible there's a lot of things you have to be aware of now the main thing i really want to talk about is um if you're making your game xbox compatible what kind of game are you making because um for certain games you can't make you can't really combine console with most majority of games because of the rules they set now if you want to make it a console only game i'll show you how to do that in a like a certain way but so you're gonna go to your basic info by just hitting the game settings button right here um and this is of course where you say playable devices like vr console all that stuff now if you were to just make a console compatible you would just want to delete all this stuff and if you want to do all you just click that now there is a few things you do have to consider though when it comes to console um some of the hardest parts of like why you can't really make your game console is because of uh some of the things you need to agree to so Okay, so by looking at this image right here, uh, this is the main thing I have to pay. You have to pay attention to is, you know, does your game contain any of these? So, does there any blood or gore, intense violence, strong, strong language, gambling, or drug reference, or any of that use? Now, that's what kind of sucks. Is like a lot of the games that I have made are like I wanted to make my Ninjago one a uh, console compatible. I really can't because there is blood, a little bit of blood at least, and there is um, in violence, um, and that's no 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 so if your game includes any of this don't uh you do not want to um you do not want to make your game console compatible um so that kind of sucks i don't know how phantom forces does it because they have a console game just separately for that so i need to look really deeply into that but for what i know yeah you really have to pay attention to these guidelines because people won't um it really won't work so yeah so a lot of the things in this guideline is we'll go we'll go start from the top um there's a lot of like best practices here so like you have to look at like character movement camera movement primary actions um and you know there's a lot of gamepad input stuff so this is where you look at gamepad input um so this is where you check if people have the gamepad uh, this is where you check if they um connected or disconnected one um so there's a lot of specific stuff in here that you would use for coding and i want you guys to really go and look into this is it's actually not as bad as you think if you look into it deeper um, so as you can tell right here, we have a thing to check if they press their gamepad and if that key code was button A. So, for example, if you have your Xbox show you. Um, if you have your Xbox controller and or you have your PS4, you really want to take it out and look at it real quick. You want to look at what we're what we're gonna be doing. So button A is the jump button. So of course, if they're doing button A, it's gonna jump. Now, one thing I will specifically say to you guys is Roblox already has these gamepad stuff made. So, you know, if you're trying to like, like a way they're like, they already have it. So your character moves, your character does this. You don't need to worry about that. Um, so that's like the main stuff is like Roblox already has that set for you. But there's other things like, let's say you want to do a sprint button. You know, you're going to have to make that. So, you know, if you want to check that the left uh, thumbstick button is being hold down, um, there are ways to check if... Uh, <clears throat> yeah like in, it began or um, i think there is a way to check but so right here this is actually the biggest one um you can look at um this is telling you like you know uh what the name is so uh, th see thumbstick one is still thumb thumbstick one so button l3 is press okay so you basically in your coding is you'd be going after button l3 is pressed and until it's released you check if it's released then they're stopping the sprint so that's kind of what i mean by you really want to check on certain things but button a button b they're all kind of the same so you really don't have to worry about that the only thing yeah and down button up down button left they're all the same um we do have touchpad button select all that kind of stuff 
So you do have to pay attention to really like what buttons you're actually using, but these are the names, which is perfect for you. Um, and as you can tell, they're right down here as well. Um, so actually, if we were to look at button, I don't know why there's no L3, but um, vibration support, you can do some vibration. Um, I, I, that's what I really love about this. Um, yeah, so this is vibrating. You can actually check if they have a vibration and you can actually give them vibration through their controller. So that's what's like really cool about all this. Um, so it's really something I just wanted to go into and talk about. Um, sometimes we're going to just go look in the toolbox. Maybe there'll be some stuff you can look at as well. Um, and I'll give you guys some little tiny stuff, but there's little practices, um, game pad, haptic feedback. Um, this is talking about the vibration and stuff. Um, we already went into that, um, radio menu. So this is actually kind of nice. Um, this is down here in the corner. Um, this really talks about, uh, for people who use, um, certain things. So frames, buttons, proximity prompts. Um, and we kind of talked about proximity prompts earlier, but these are actually configurable automatically to do gamepad buttons. So I'll show you that in just a sec here, but, um, I guess there's no radio. I don't know where that is, but you really want to look at, uh, you know, your GUI is the screen size, um, making sure it's scaled correctly, um, across all platforms. Same thing for this. Oh, okay. Well, that's not really what we're looking at, but, um, yeah, bind certain you with buttons, except B to recline, make sure all controls are compatible with Xbox. Um, B button also means used to close button. Of course, that's like always the main thing. B, always think about how you you actually play a, a game in general and think about like, okay, A's to jump, B's to close something or, you know, hold it down or Y's to get out of something, you know, kind of stuff like that. Um, there is core UI you can disable, it looks like. Um, so that's kind of nice. Um, and yeah, so... This kind of just like is a little definition of what you can do. There's a lot of gamepad inputs. Um, this was actually a good guide as well. This is a good console developer guide. So, you know, talking about UI, it wants you to simplify UI. Um, make sure it's a no chat window, complexities. Uh, you know, these are the buttons icons. So they have all the buttons right here. Um, <clears throat> haptic feedback, uh, building for 10 foot TV safe area. Size UI, um, body shape, you know, it, uh, it really depends on how you want to do like the UI. Um, I kind of, I think this is kind of cool how they did it. So basically you just like click the button and then you go into another UI source. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of an, a little example of saying that. So I'm actually going to show you a quick, like with proximity prompts and stuff. So this was that one avatar thing we did. So if you go down in your proximity prompt, you can actually look at things like this. So um, see how it says button X. So that's kind of what I meant by like, there's already things configured for you in Roblox. So you would want to do, but yeah, button X is like the main thing. Cause you're normally when you select something, you're going to click this button right here. So that's a good thing to just do. Um, but yeah, and there's a whole durations. You can set that to like two seconds or such. Now, if you really wanted to go and like, just see if there's any models that you can look at, you could say like, Xbox GUI, um, or something. So like CS blocks menu GUI. Uh, so like, I don't really know if this is really that good, but, um, starter character scripts. So we have set motor. Um, actually, yeah, this is actually pretty cool. Oh yeah. I like this. Okay. So like right here, what this is doing is it's checking if a person dies and if they die, then it's going to, uh, vibrate. So, you know, stuff like that. Um, let's see, this one is set motor. Yeah. If, their health gets changed every time their health gets changed it's gonna be uh like setting their vibration on so that's kind of cool uh started ui let's look at this so gamepad one so yeah you, you you're gonna want to check of course if there uh is gamepad you know if they have an xbox controller and if they do button y is uh doing this button b is doing this um and it opens it such and so forth i don't know why there's so many things in here but I mean, actually, I mean, if we can just like, I'll just put this in the start. I just see what it looks like real quick. So yeah, kind of like the idea of what I was really talking about. Um, but I can't really connect my controller right now. But as you can tell, this is kind of what I meant. I'm actually think I could, but yeah. So you basically, you want to think about, uh, how can you make your game Xbox like worthy, I guess you could say, or console worthy. You don't, you really just want to be careful about it. You don't want to, um overdo it and you want to just like you know really think about it because 
I'll, it's actually really easy for like hangout games like you don't really need to like do anything much about it or like certain other other certain games um don't really worry if your game's not like fully xbox compatible in my opinion um you know if you just like if they're able to play your game and through xbox and stuff like that like you're able to like chat and do all this stuff then that that shouldn't be of worries to you you shouldn't have to worry about um them doing certain things in the game as long as you look into it but um if you guys leave some suggestions in the description about uh you know what exactly you want to do by that i mean like leaving things about uh how to make this through xbox or how to make this console compatible how do you make um the certain dance uis now one one thing i can honestly just say like off the top of my head is like a lot of your scripts you're gonna go and look at mouse button click so if you were to just look at mouse button one click or like right here we're gonna this is local clicked equals mouse button one click so billboard this is uh something like that or um certain things you could just add another statement to check if it's a gamepad and if it is a gamepad then you know you could just do stuff like that so this is a lot of work though for certain things um some people already have these configured in their games or assets so really just look into that um but yeah that's about it you guys i hope you enjoyed this kind of little explanation of how do you make your game xbox compatible it's nothing too crazy um but you really just have to look into the smaller little things and then go into the bigger things which just requires more of the programming part but yeah I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.